Hey there, my name is Austin Gill, and in this video, we are going to be implementing HTTP redirects using Edge Compute and why you should consider it for a future project. We're gonna be discussing what HTTP redirects are, how they work, why they're useful, and more importantly, how Edge Compute can improve upon traditional server technology. As usual, everything I discuss will be linked to in the video description where it's relevant, as well as a link for $100 in free credit for new Linode customers. So with that, we can get started. So first off, we should understand what HTTP redirects are. Redirects allow an HTTP server to respond with instructions for the browser that the page it's trying to reach is no longer available and that it should go to a new page instead. Now, these instructions can tell the browser whether the redirect is temporary or if it's going to be permanent. Redirects have been around on the web for a long time and they're useful in a number of different scenarios such as pages that have moved or no longer exist, uh, URL changes for SEO purposes, whole site migrations from one domain to another, uh, if you're building something like a URL shortener, managing different language or country preferences, or managing different devices. Now you might be asking yourself, if you are in control of the URL of a page, can't you just change the URL and call it a day? And the answer is yes, technically, but there's other things to take into account. Most importantly, you may have control over the URLs where your pages exist, but those pages may have been referenced on an external site and you don't have control over those external sites. So a user from an external site might click on that link, be directed to the old page, and then you wanna make sure that you have some sort of redirect in place that sends that traffic from the old page to the new page. Ideally, you fix these redirects because you don't wanna add more latency to a user's request, but we don't always have control over that. And that's why we set up redirects. If you wanna dig deeper into what redirects are, Wikipedia has some really good articles about it, uh, but I'm going to shift focus into how redirects are implemented in traditional servers. The two most popular HTTP servers today are arguably Nginx or Apache, and both of them rely on configuration files to manage redirects. In Apache, for example, a redirect might look like this virtual host section that contains the server name, and then you would have a line that uh, directs a redirect to the next domain name. For Nginx, you would have a server block with all of the configuration for it, and somewhere in there, you would also uh, list the domain name for the server, as well as a rewrite rule, which points to the new domain and flags it as a redirect. Now, I'm not going to focus on the specific nuances of each individual server and how they handle redirects. Instead, I wanna look at how a redirect lifecycle sort of works. Essentially, a user will put the URL that they're trying to go to into their browser, which will then make a request to the uh, server that's responsible for that URL. The server, if that page has moved or has been redirected, is going to respond with the instructions to the browser uh, of where to go instead. So the response comes back to the browser, then the browser gets the new instructions, makes a second request to the URL where that page should exist, and then ultimately the server is going to respond with the payload, which uh, most often is something like an HTML page. So as you can see in the lifecycle of a redirect, the browser has to make two HTTP requests. And this can be an issue, especially if your users are far away from the server and they experience long latency times, because that's going to seriously impact the performance of that page load. Consider a scenario where your web server is in Toronto, Canada, and a user from Tokyo, Japan, tries to load a page that has since been moved to a new location, but is set up to follow a redirect their browser request would have to travel from their location in Tokyo to the server in Toronto, be told that this isn't the page they're looking for, travel back to Tokyo with instructions for where the new page can be found, then back to Toronto to download the resource for that real page, and ultimately back to Tokyo with the response. Now that's all great if you're trying to rack up frequent flyer miles, but it's not great for performance, which is not great for user experience, which is not great for conversion rates, which is probably not great for your website. So what can we do about this? Well, you could move your server from Toronto to Tokyo, and that would be great for your users in Tokyo, but then you would end up moving your server away from the users in Toronto. So that's not great. You could ask your users to just use the right URL in the first place, but as we mentioned before, you don't really have control if they found that URL from some third party website that you don't have control over. So also not a great option. So we have to figure out something else. And anytime you start dealing with latency questions, 
uh, that should be a trigger that edge compute might be a very good solution. So let's look into that. Before I get onto that though, let me just add that if you are enjoying this video and you would like more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe so that you get notified when more videos like this come out. So Edge Compute allows you to distribute little software programs to edge nodes that are distributed all over the world. And they sit in between a client's request and a server's response. So they can manipulate the request on the way to the server or on the way back from the origin server to the client. So with that architecture in mind, we can actually distribute some redirect logic to our edge nodes all over the world. And that way, when a user makes a request, it can be processed from the edge location as close to their geographic location as possible, thus reducing the latency time spent, and it can redirect their browser much quicker. Applied to our Tokyo, Toronto example before, this would mean that the user's request from their browser in Tokyo would go to the edge node location also in Tokyo, grab the redirect information from there almost immediately, and then go ahead and be able to follow the redirect to the final landing page, which is probably still on that server in Toronto. So as you can see in this example, it wouldn't remove the latency entirely, but it does remove it from one of the two requests that need to be made, cutting the whole latency time roughly in half, which is what a mathematician would call statistically significant. So when we consider the benefits of edge compute redirects versus traditional HTTP redirects, we'll see that the major benefit is going to be this reduced latency. However, there's another big benefit that often goes overlooked that I also wanna mention. It's not uncommon for large and established organizations to amass hundreds or thousands or even millions of redirects over time. And this can become extremely cumbersome to manage, especially if you're trying to manage them in a server config file. Fortunately, most edge compute runtimes actually offer a nice solution for this in the shape of a key value store that integrates directly with the runtime. With this, you could actually store the redirect information in a more database-like environment. The advantage here is that you have a clear separation of concerns where the actual redirect logic will live within the code that you're going to deploy on the runtime, but all of the data associated with those redirects can be maintained in this key value store. And when you have something like an API or a CLI that can manage this data, it makes it a lot easier to do so programmatically. So in addition to reduced latency, we also have the benefit of better data management. In a future video, I'll actually be walking through the step-by-step -step instructions on how to build your own edge redirector uh, using Akamai Edge Workers and Edge KV. So make sure that you're subscribed if you want to be notified when that video comes out. And I should probably also mention that Akamai has a product called Edge Redirector, which basically allows you to deploy redirect logic to the edge to remove that latency. Uh, it's not as flexible as something like uh, edge compute in general, but if all you need is that redirect logic, then definitely give that product a look. Okay, that's my case for edge redirects. I hope you found this video useful. It's also worth noting that introducing edge compute to your architecture doesn't come without a cost. It does introduce some level of complexity. So you wanna make sure that you are ready for that. Before diving into an edge compute redirect solution, you should be able to answer the question, how many redirects do you currently manage? How many people are hitting those redirects? And how important is performance to the application that you're building? Implementing HTTP redirects with a traditional server might actually be the right choice for today. They're simple, they're reliable, they're effective. But as an organization grows, you might start reaching levels of traffic that can tip the scales over towards being benefited by edge compute. And in that case, it's just good to have these sort of solutions in mind because even though you may not need them today, you may need them tomorrow. So that's all I'm going to cover today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know by liking it or leaving a comment. And remember that all of the links for things that I discussed are in the video description, as well as that $100 promo. So I hope you check it out. And until next time, have a good one.